All right, so this video is going to show the construction of these block columns. Uh, these columns are going to be replacing the brick columns that I demolished in a previous video. It's essentially going to be a time lapse and I'll be explaining some of the stuff that I'm doing along the way. I'll also put in some timestamps in the description if you want to skip certain sections of the video. The blocks that I'm using to make these columns are made by Abbotsford Concrete Products and they're the stack wall corners that I'm using. The stack wall is uh, one of their wall systems um, but I'm just using the corners. Now these stack wall corners they're not actually rectangular shaped but they fit together in a way that winds up producing a square column. Um, so they work perfectly fine for this application. They come in different uh, color combinations. And I went with the sandalwood, which looks like it's a mixture of two different colors. And I think it uh, looks pretty good. So the majority of the work on this project was actually getting the base ready and getting the first layer of blocks set in place. I started out by clearing out the uh, loose dirt from the old brick columns that I removed. And then I also went around and dug it out a little bit deeper and made sure that it was level uh, from side to side and front to back because I'm going to be putting in a base of rock and then putting some sand on top of that as the uh, foundation for the first layer. Uh, so I wanted to dig it a little bit deeper and have room for the uh, rock and sand that I'll be putting in there. Once I got the hole prepped, I went ahead and started doing the electrical work. I needed to splice in a new wire uh, that will be running up the middle. I'm starting out with the remnant of the cable from the brick columns that I removed. So what I did is I found a ground rated splicing kit at my local home improvement store. And it comes with some brass connections for each of the wires that are separated by a plastic piece. And then it has a uh, heat shrink tube that you slide over after you get the connections made and you uh, shrink it on there. And it has this uh, gel stuff that uh, seals it all up and makes it uh, waterproof. And then after I made the connections, but before I did the heat shrinking of the tube, I went ahead and checked to make sure that everything worked right, and it did. Then I fit a PVC tube to a right angle fitting that is going to protect the wire. and I drilled a hole in the bottom of the fitting uh, to drain any water that gets in there. And then once I got that done, I poured in the rock for the base. After I got the rock in at a certain uh, depth, I was able to position and stand up the uh, conduit for the wire. And that also is the position for where the center of the column is going to be. Um, and then I went around and I made sure that the rock was uh, leveled out. And once I got that done, I put a layer of sand on top. And then I made sure that I leveled out the sand because uh, your columns are only gonna be as good as your base. You know, so I put quite a bit of time making sure that that sand was nice and level. 
Um, after I did that, I went ahead and I wetted it. Um, I believe that helps uh, everything settle in place. And then I uh, checked the level again and made some um, adjustments here and there. And once I got all that uh, leveled out and looking good, I started to set the first layer, which is the most important layer. So I got the first layer of block set. I took my level and made sure everything was uh, looking good before proceeding to lay the next layer of block. Um, and then I started setting the additional layers. Now you can't really see on here. Um, it kind of looks like I'm dry setting them, but I'm not. I'm applying Gorilla Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive to the bottom of each of the blocks before I set them in place. And I'm also making sure that the tops and bottoms of the blocks are brushed off before I apply the construction adhesive. And this uh, Gorilla construction adhesive, once it's set, it has a really good bond. An important thing that I'm doing when I'm setting these blocks in place is that I'm making sure that each subsequent layer of block overlaps the previous layer. And that not only uh, looks good, but it also provides the structural integrity for the column, uh, having everything overlapping each other on each uh, subsequent layer. And there it is, the final level check. You can see that it uh, came out nice and level. Uh, looked pretty good. So here I am on the following day, getting ready to put the caps on. And these caps that I got are poured concrete caps. And they use some type of a textured mold for producing the uh, texture on the tops and the sides and you can see that I had to cut off the remnant of PVC pipe that they used for producing a hole in the middle of the caps so I got that cut nice and flush and here you can see me applying the construction adhesive getting ready to put the cap on and this cap being a single piece of concrete was pretty heavy so it was uh yeah it was a task setting it in place and then the following day um, it was time to put the lights on and i started out by putting in the uh basically the adapter that's going to mount to the cap and then the column lights will mount to it. I had to mark the positions in the uh, concrete cap and then use a hammer drill to drill out the holes for the cap. I drilled the first two holes um, and mounted the base plate and then with it mounted I drilled the other two holes um, I just wanted to make sure that I got the holes in the right positions. And after you drill the holes in the concrete, uh, you put in these plastic pieces that you screw into. And the screw then pushes against those and produces a uh, secure anchor, at least secure enough for this application.
Then I put the uh, column light on it and I went ahead and positioned it where I thought it would look best. And I drilled some pilot holes for the screws. Um, I didn't want to just uh, tighten the screws against it. I wanted the screws to screw through some pilot holes to make sure that it, uh, you know, is anchored in place pretty well. And then I had to vacuum up all the uh, chips and the dust. And I went ahead and removed the uh, base plate uh, to be able to access the remaining um, debris that needed to be vacuumed up. Then I wired it up and put the column light on. And then once I got that done, I put in the light bulbs and I used some uh, filament, LED filament bulbs. And those are really nice uh, lights. They look like regular light bulbs, but they're actually uh, LED lights. Uh, so they use a lot less energy. They look pretty nice. And then I went ahead and put the top cap on the column light to finish it off. And went inside and turned the lights on. And this is the final result. I think they came out looking uh, really nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and got some uh, good information and ideas. And have a good one and take it easy.